Kate Sylvia. I'm going to demonstrate a quick and easy way to do dodging and burning in Photoshop without actually using the dodge and burn tools. Let's get started. Here we have an image of a small cascade waterfall from Western North Carolina. At first glance, this doesn't seem to need any work at all, but I actually use dodging and burning on just about every image, sometimes very subtly, sometimes a little bit more dramatically. This one is probably going to be more subtle, and then I'll show you an image where I might use it quite a bit more. So how do we do this? First, we have to add a blank layer. So I'm going to go down here where I hover over the create a new layer icon, and I have a new blank layer. You can also come up to layer, new layer, but we just need a blank layer. I'm going to come up to edit. And I'm going to say fill. And for my contents, black or white is usually the default, but I'm going to pick 50% gray. I'm going to make sure that my blending mode is normal right here and my opacity is 100%. I'm going to click OK. Yes, the image definitely turns gray. That's what you want. Come down to the layers palette. If you don't see your layers palette, just come up to window and click on layers and that will appear off to the side. Within the layers palette, the default blending mode is normal. We're going to change that to overlay. Now your image should look exactly the same as when you started. So if I click that layer on and off, you don't see any changes. So now I'm going to select my brush by typing the letter B. The default setting for your brush should be the dark on the top, white on the bottom. If you want to switch this, you can either toggle this little arrow back and forth, but that's really tiny and quite annoying. So I just type the X key to flip back and forth. Now the important part here is that I want to change the opacity of my brush. By default, it's probably at about 100%. At 100% brightening, it's just, it's too much. So let's undo that. And I'm just going to type the number one to get my opacity to 10%. Or you can use the slider or type it in up here. At 10%, it's going to be extremely subtle, but it's also going to be cumulative. So watch this. I'm going to go once, twice, three times. Every time I make a, br a brush stroke, it is making the image 10% brighter. If I wanted 20% or 25% or 50%, all you have to do is type that number into the opacity. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to use dark and light values in order to guide the eye through the image. And so basically I want the eye to come in towards this bottom corner. So I'm going to brighten this a little bit. That's once, that's twice. I might draw it in here, a little bit of brightness right there, that water right there. This one doesn't need very much. And the opposite is true as well. I can toggle the X key and now I'm painting with 10% dark. If I change that to 100%, clearly that's too much. Let's undo that. So I'm going to go back to about 10%. And if I click in one spot, like I want to darken that little area right here. I'm going to click, 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 click. One, two, three, four, five. Darken that just a smidge. That right in here. And this maybe quite a bit. So I'm going to just tap, tap, tap. All I'm doing is tapping. So one, two, three, four, five. Now I could switch it to, you know, 20% or 40% or 50%, but I really just want that little 10% at a time. Very subtle changes. I might want to put a little strip of brighter light right along this rock edge in order to draw the eye in. So I'm going to toggle the X key again. I'm going to make that 10% brighter, maybe once, twice, slightly smaller circle, one more time. Now, if you were to turn your head away and then look at this image again, you wouldn't really think that I had done anything at all, but let me turn this off and then back on. Do you see how the light shifts? Let's do that again off and on. If I want to save this with this layer intact so that I can come back at any point in time and make further changes, I would save this as a PSD or a TIFF. Let's see this one more time. Here's another image. Now I'm going to do this again. I'm going to add a blank layer, edit, fill with 50% gray, and change the blending mode to overlay. Now just showed you how to do it again, but let's trash that. If you take the time just one time 
and create an action for this, you can see my dodge and burn layer right here. All I have to do is click on that action and click play, and it does all of those steps for me, and I can immediately start brushing. Now with this image, I got there a little bit late in the morning, so that early morning light is a little bit harsh. But I had to make do with what I had, and I loved the composition, I loved the reflection and the nice still water, wanted to take advantage of all of that and these gorgeous spring blooms. But I really want these to stand out more, and I want to tone down all around this tree where it's in the bright sunlight. So I'm going to select B for my brush. I'm going to make it bigger by using the bracket keys. And I'm going to brighten this. That's 10%, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And I'm going to hit the X key, and I'm going to darken this 10%. And one more time, and one more time. Notice I'm not being very specific. I'm actually being kind of sloppy with this. And the reason I can be a little sloppy is because I'm using a big, soft brush. Come up here to the brush settings. You can see I'm at 0% hardness, so huge soft brush. It just makes the transition very, very smooth and over a broad area, so it's not blatantly obvious what I've done. Smaller brush, toggle the X key. I'm gonna brighten these up a little bit more, and especially these reds and these purples. I'm gonna I'm gonna click on that one, two, three, four, five, several times to really make that purple pop. And these colors down in here, and these colors right in here. And I'm gonna to toggle the X key, make it dark again. I'm going to darken these a little bit. I don't want those so bright, and definitely up here in these corners. And the green trees. I'm just tapping the mouse. Tap, tap, tap. Okay. Again, if you were to just look at this image straight out, you wouldn't really think that I had done much to it. And here we turn that off and on. You can see this one is much more dramatic than the last one, and that was simply my choice. That was how many times I took that 10% brush. I could have switched it to 20 and probably saved myself a few clicks, but whatever works. So I'm going to toggle that off and on. Notice how the light has completely shifted. It is balanced out, so all of this that was very, very bright earlier, see how bright it was? I have darkened it down, and actually darkening it down made it just a touch more saturated. So this is actually something that I will do right after my raw processing and before I make any major changes to color, because this alone will alter the color a little bit. So I'll do this step first, and then I might come back and deal with individual colors all on their own. I hope you've enjoyed this little quick tip. Dodging and burning has been around since the dawn of photography, and I do believe it is here to stay. It is extremely valuable, and I hope you find it useful in your images. Thanks!